Jesus came and listened to me and glory to God. He set me free. He set me free. Yes, he set me free. And he broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound my Jesus to see. many knows you're free amen. tonight? I almost said this morning. How many knows you're free tonight? Amen. I'm free, free, free. Whew. It's good to be at church, isn't it? Amen.
Who am I to deserve what the Lord came down and did? Nothing we could have done to help ourselves. Didn't deserve it. Many times we probably haven't appreciated it, really. I mean, if we really appreciated it, it would mean more to us sometimes than, than what it is and what it uh, shows in our life. Uh, you wish sometimes you could just take people and <laughs> just shake them <laughs> sometimes to get, get the attention to let them know how, how much better life would be completely turning things over to him and uh, letting him be Lord. And I know it's, it's hard. Uh, we can say it easily, doing it is, they were talking about uh, the other night, they were talking about the song, Whatever It Takes. And I love the song, but it is really hard for somebody to sing it. It's not a difficult song to sing. It's a rather easy song to sing. But if you really are singing from your heart, if you're not singing from your heart, there's no sense in, in, in doing this. That's why I like to hear Sister Cheryl sing, Who Am I? Because I know she doesn't have an ego about anything she does, and she's just as appreciative of what the Lord's done for her and does for her. Now, she she's has some health issues. She struggles with that. She asks prayer continuously for those things, but she still doesn't lose sight of the fact of what he does and has done for her in her life. So I love to hear her sing, Who Am I? I love to hear Mike Williams sing, Thanks to Calvary. I don't live there. It lives in the same house, but we don't live and go to those same places. We're not the same person anymore, thanks to Calvary. So I, just, I love to hear certain people here you know, sing, certain types of songs, but I think sometimes we, we sing Amazing Grace and we go just by rote. We just sing Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And if you can make it through that line, just that line, if you didn't sing anything else of the song, if you can make it through that line of the song and that thing doesn't tug at you, really just get a hold of you and make you go, you know, hey, because it should every time we get to it, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound of amazing grace that saved a wretch like me. Um, William introduced me to a track uh, a while back. It's uh, Gerald Wolf started doing some some uh, singings out. They would do a lot of the red back stuff, and they would do singing notes and different things. Uh, and and they did just as I am. How many times we sing just as I am for invitation, and we just get up here and we sing just as I am. Everybody's from, we're trying to get the congregation to sing, and everybody's singing just as I am without one plea. But that thy blood was shed for me. And he went through and explained the verse. He took pieces of the verse just as I am without a plea. Without a, I couldn't make an excuse. I couldn't say anything for myself, do anything on my own behalf, and went through that whole song. Oh, it made you look at just as I am different than, than what. If you know the backstories of some of these songs, it is well with my soul. If you know those backstories, it just make, main, makes it be something different in your heart when you hear it. And if you're the singer, singing it from your heart, oh, Brother Jerry saying, Brother Jerry doesn't claim to be a solo singer. But one night, a few years back, I asked him about singing. And he sung a cappella, had it not been. It doesn't matter how you sound, where you are on the key, how your pitch works. It's nice to hear 
I mean, you know, I love to hear William sing. He, he clears out those notes, and I don't have to worry when he's climbing that he's going to make it there. He hits it, and it's clear as a bell, and I love the fact that he can do that. But Brother Jerry's singing, had it not been, with tears streaming down his face, does just as much for me because it's coming from his heart. Oh, man, I don't know about you, but today's been a good day. Wasn't that a good sermon this morning? Amen. I mean, I know he changed that thing up last night from his experience yesterday, but the Lord was just in that thing this morning. And if anybody could get a hold of that right there and does get a hold of it, I, I believe that may be why most of y'all are back here tonight. We've got a big crowd here with this choir when it comes down. There's a good crowd here. Maybe some of us got a hold of that a little bit tonight, that we renewed that right spirit so that we might be where we need to be for the Lord. We had quite a few people over uh, for New Year's, and we were sitting in there, and I, and I played the song for them so they could hear it because it, it done so much for me. Sometimes you play the same song for somebody, and, and they don't get the same uh, feeling or reaction, but we played the song. And uh, Brother Bill Kane started giving his testimony. And, uh, and he went in deeper detail about his testimony than y'all have probably ever heard. And, and, and started dealing with all the way back to when he was just a kid and how he was raised up, what he endured growing up, um, what he got himself into and how he lived. This was before Casey and the girls and all the things that <coughs> happened to him since. And I'm not telling anything that he wouldn't stand up here and, and say himself. Um, but he was talking about his hope. We asked him one night during the Christmas cantata practice. I looked at him after the practice and I said, what does Christ mean to you now, Bill? Now that you've been through what you've been through and gone through those those hard times with the drug addiction and 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 those sorts of things going to jail and coming out what what does it mean to you now and he said it simply means hope christ means hope and this song says all my hope is in jesus it's a simple little song um, not a lot behind it as far as the music's real simple um, but the words uh, we've started singing it. and when we start singing something it usually takes about three weeks for this choir to get it out of here and, and in here and uh, so they're still somewhere between here and their tonsils they, they hadn't quite got it just right because they're trying to figure out what they're doing um, but we'll sing it for you. And go ahead. I know we don't use it usually. Okay. We'll do it. We'll do it.
sins are forgiven. Yes, they are. I've been washed by the blood. I'm no stranger to the prison. I've worn shackles and chains. going back I'll never be the same that's why I sing all my hope is in breaks a man it breaks him down to his knees God I've been broken more than a time or two yes I have then he picked me up then he showed me what it means to be a man come on and sing it now Man, sing it now. All my hopes stand 
him. Sing it with him. Yes, sing it. You know it by now. Listen, thank God my yesterday's gone. All my sins are forgiven. I'm so glad I've been washed by the blood. Sing it one more time. Sing it now. All my hope is in Jesus. Not bad for a first time. Oh, let's just sing it again. Sing it now. Oh. I tell you, I, I got to tell you, I, I, I couldn't give a flying flip about the Super Bowl. I was reading an article. They said that one half, 50% of the players that are in the National Football League have criminal records. It's no wonder they'll take the knee and stand for other criminals. I don't want to give them one iota of uh, my television time. I don't want to give them, uh, what do you call it, ratings? I wouldn't give you five pennies for the whole lot of them any longer. But in saying that, I do want to say this, is I do appreciate, on the other hand, that there are God's saints, even in that dark hole. 
thank God there's a young man that's throwing the football tonight for the Eagles. That stood up and said, I love Jesus. And has gone into seminary. And I know he's in seminary, but I was also told, I don't know if this is accurate, but I was also told that he's quitting football to take a pastorate. <clears throat> so even in the dark bowl hole <laughs> of the Super Bowl, there's God's saints. That little flicker of light in the place of darkness. I was thinking about this coming weekend and what God has for Westside Baptist Church. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that this is the time for prayer. Wednesday night we discussed this thing of prayer and I want to invite you that used to come on Wednesday night to start coming back Wednesday nights. We're going to have a song like we usually have. We're going to worship. We're going to have our time in the Word of God, but we're going to come together in prayer. And I'm not sure how many as of yet, depending on how many, will come and be obedient to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. But I want us to break off in groups. And I want us to pray for each other. Pray for one another. Pray for our country. I want us to watch others pray and learn how to pray. I want to raise up a generation of prayer warriors at Westside Baptist Church. And that the foundation for that can be the Wednesday night prayer meeting. I'm not against prayer on during the prayer meeting, are you? I pointed out to the Wednesday night congregation that in Acts chapter 16 when Paul and Silas were arrested for winning that demon-possessed woman to the Lord, her masters, her owners, they called the sheriff's department, got on 911 and said, we got a problem over here. There's this stupid Baptist preacher tearing our business apart. And they came in and grabbed Paul and Silas and threw them in the dungeon. Things seemed pretty quiet. Things were pretty normal. But at midnight, the Bible says Paul and Silas prayed. Everything was quiet. The prison doors were locked. The guard was at ease and stood outside. He was charged. And I don't mean he was politely asked to watch these two men. He was charged, the Bible says, for their protection. And it wasn't their protection. It was their protection from them. That he was charged with. But Paul and Silas began to pray. And after they prayed, the Bible says, and began to sing. It was at that time that the doors began to shake. It was at that time that the foundation began to rattle. It was then that the story began to unfold, and that story led to the salvation of that very man that was charged to keep Paul and Silas in prison. Not only did we see this man saved, but we found that his whole house was saved and baptized that night. All because the Bible says that Paul and Silas prayed. Job prayed. The Bible says in Job chapter 42 and verse 10, The Lord turned the captivity of Job. Y'all know the story of Job. 
the, one, the man that was once a billionaire turned into a pauper. The man that had everything all of a sudden had nothing. But the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Boy, that got a hold of me when I read this, but it got a hold of me tonight as I sat here. And Dave said, I didn't call that scoundrel, but I prayed for him. He didn't call me. He lied two times to Miss Pina. But he did one better than that. He called on the Lord. I want to tell you something happened to Job. The Bible says when he prayed for his friends. The next line in the scripture says... The Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. You just started a new job. I think God's going to give you twice as much as he gave you before. I'm glad about that because Brother Dave's a tither. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm saying Job prayed for his friends and God blessed him and maybe... We need to take that and apply it to our Christian lives. We're so busy praying for our own needs that we forget to supplicate. We forget to go to the Lord for our friends. We really emphasize praying for our enemies. But in this case, he was blessed at the time he prayed for his friends. I think we need to look across the congregation and understand that what we see are our friends and begin to pray for one another and watch God bless us. In the dark time Paul and Silas prayed, they were blessed with the salvation of others. When Job prayed, he was blessed with material things. Then, as we've talked about this morning, Jonah went to the Lord angry with God. You know, I said this Wednesday night something like this. I'll say it again. We kind of looked down on Jonah because he went to the Lord and said, How could you do such a thing? How could you say that wicked, wicked city? I knew you were going to do it. You're gracious, you're merciful. And like I told you back, before you stuck me in the well, this is exact, and that's what happened, and Lord, I'm not happy about it. Can I just challenge you Christians to stop playing games during prayer time and talk to the Lord plain? It didn't do Jonah any harm. He felt so lousy. He said, Lord, just take my life. But the fact of the matter is, the man prayed from his heart even though he was wrong. God's got us figured out. He knows we're wrong. You don't have to fake it. You don't have to act it out. You don't have to bow and fathereth, we loveth you with. Hallowed be thy nameth. And the whole time you're painting a pretty picture with your pathetic prayer. God knows our wicked heart. So why don't we stop playing games and just pray what's on our heart and mind? We'll be surprised how God enjoys a little honesty from his people. So Jonah, like it or not, was honest about his prayers. Then we see that the Lord Jesus prayed. We find him on the Mount of Transfiguration. And we found when he prayed that his fashion, the fashion of his countenance, his appearance changed. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe part of the lesson, without getting into a lot of theology, is prayer time will change us. It'll change us. Oh, we talked about how it will bless us. Yes, it will. We talked about Paul and Silas and how it changed others. 
Praise God, a whole family saved and baptized. Thank God because they prayed. It does change our lives. It does change the lives of those around us. But why don't we just be honest with God? And by the way, he will change us. <clears throat> this morning we talked about Elijah. James chapter 5 mentions Elias, a man subject to like passions as we are. Did you hear that? Elijah wrestled with everything we wrestle with. Fights like we fight. Moans like we moan. Regrets like we regret. Is shamed as we are shamed. Just like we are. But he prayed. And it didn't rain for three and a half years. Yes. Prayer changes us. Prayer changes others. But I tell you. This man prayed. And it even stopped rain for three years and six months. And then. Get this. He prayed again. And then the rain began to stop fall after that three and a half years you know what the point is there pray again lay it out before God pray for your friends that's okay he'll bless you for it pray when you're in the middle of a battle he might save somebody around you pray it'll change you praise God but then like Elias don't just pray once but pray again let God change some things. His prayers literally changed a nation. And don't count ourselves short, Christians. Our prayers can change our nation. I personally believe that we've seen the prayers of God's saints change some things in our nation. It wasn't too long ago, ladies and gentlemen, that we were we were bound for jail for preaching against homosexuals. It was coming. Canada had already implemented the international law and began to jail and find preachers. And that same international law was being run down the throat of the American people, of the American Christians. And I'm here to tell you that this boy would have been put in jail, and gladly so, to preach against the perversion that this world is trying to thrust upon us. I'm just saying that prayer changes us. It changes the lost. It'll change our nation. And here we have an opportunity coming up next weekend. We're bringing in God's men from literally all over the country. My understanding is some are from Ten Memphis, some are from the mountains of Tennessee, some from North Carolina, some from, uh, I believe, maybe Florida. We're bringing men from all over so they can stand on this platform and sing the praises of God. Men that can stand behind this holy desk and preach full of his power to a congregation that needs it. And all we have to do to make next weekend a tool of the Lord that would move us forward and not backwards, put us up and not down, be a blessing and not a messing to us, change our hearts, change our perspective, I'm saying that we need to pray. Pray, Westside Baptist Church. Pray on Wednesday night. Yes! But we need to pray together. We need to pray for each other, about each other. We need to have a desire to see God do something in the lives 
of those around us and our lives. The question is this, and this is where the rubber meets the road. Do we even care if the lives of those are changed around us? Do we even care if God changes our heart? Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a right spirit within me. Before it can happen, Westside Baptist Church, I say this with all the love that I can muster, but also in all seriousness and dogmatism. I want to say this. When I ask this, do we even care? And if we care, this meeting can change us forever. I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask Brother Joe Honeycutt, if you would, to come up here. I'm going to ask Brother Anthony, if you would, to come up here. I'm going to ask Brother Mike, if you would, to come up here. And Brother Mike, if you would, to come up here. Brother John, I want you to come up, please. Y'all would just come on up on the pulpit, Pastor, on the platform, Pastor. You, right, I want you to end it. I want you to stand right here. Let these men pray. I want you to pray last, please. Brother, I want you to come up here. I want you to start us out in prayer. And then me and you just come through as follow. Then Pastor Payne's going to end it. This is serious business. I want us to have a good time this weekend. But I want it to do something for the church. I want it to bring us up to a higher plane. I want us to get a hold of heaven. And I want heaven to get a hold of us. So we're going to pray with the intentions and the desire that God, the Holy Spirit, His Son would all show up. Do something for us. Now, I'm going to ask the church if you would to stand. And I'm going to ask all that would come forward to come and gather around the altar. And let's ask God to do something mighty for Westside Baptist Church. Let's ask God to do something for the membership as a whole. Let's ask God to do something for the membership individually. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a chance. We've got a chance for revival. Why don't we take advantage of what God has given us and say, Lord, what would you have me to do? What would you have me to ask? Lord, what would you have me to pray? God, what would you and could you do to help me to live a Christian walk, a stronger walk, a greater walk, a more effective walk? For you, O oh Lord, what, what, Lord, would you allow to happen in my life? I'm going to ask you to pray, brother. Father God and Lord Jesus, thank you for today, Lord. Thank you for the time that we have to be in your house. Yes, God, in this moment, I ask that you would work in the lives of our church and the lives of the members and the visitors and the, and the speakers and the singers that are going to be here next weekend. God, I ask... In Jesus' name, that you would anoint this place. Yes, God, Lord. you are El Shaddai, the all-sufficient God. Amen. And I ask that you would be that in this church and in this membership and in this time for such a time as this, as Esther 4.14 says. God, we will give you the honor and the glory. We are claiming victory in Jesus because Satan has no place in Jesus' name. We ask him to flee yes. in the name of Jesus and not to enter this place again. That's right. And never to do it. And we paint the door with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Lord, thank you in advance for what you're going to do. Prepare our hearts, Lord, tell our spiritual hearts to beat again. Amen.
We love you, God. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Precious Lamb of God tonight. Amen. We're so thankful for the privilege you've given us. God, to call on your sweet name. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for saving my unworthy soul. Amen. Thank you for my salvation. Thank you, Lord, for the grace that you've given me. Lord, I pray for this church, God, that you bless every one of us, God. Lord, in our time of prayer that we'll call on your name. Yes, Lord. God, and mean business with you. Amen. Touch your heart, Lord, that you could touch our hearts. Yes. God, just bless this congregation. Lord, that you've given this church. God, I love every one of them. And I know you do, too. God, yes. just have your way in Jesus' name. Yes, Amen. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, we're grateful for the opportunity that you've given us to work in your vineyard. And Lord, yes. I pray that you would help us all to understand the great privilege it is to be in the, in the army of the King. And Father, I pray that you would help us, dear Lord, to take that challenge seriously. Father, the things the preacher preached about tonight, Lord, I pray, God, that you would help us and touch our hearts. And, Lord, I pray, God, that you would break our spirits to bring it to where it needs to be with you. I thank you, Lord, for allowing me to worship with this church. And, Lord, I thank you for the lives they live and the testimony they have. But, Lord, a congregation like ours, Lord, we need to draw up closer to you from time to time, and now's the time. Lord, I pray that you would just help your people. And, Lord, I pray that you would bring revival to us. And, Father, I pray that you would help the revival to begin with me and begin with each and every one of us. Lord, I pray that you would use this church to stir this city. And, Lord, we thank you for all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Heavenly Father. Lord, we come to the throne of grace this evening. Lord, we humble ourselves before you, your children, dear God, here at Westside Baptist Church. Heavenly Father, Lord, I ask that this day, Lord, that you would instill in the hearts of your people the right spirit. Yes, Lord. To be a blessing to this community. Yes. Lord, that... Uh, Westside Baptist Church could once again be the lighthouse that shines the light of Jesus Christ upon every soul in this county. Lord, uh, first of all, I know that, Lord, that uh, we need that spirit here in this church That's among right. ourselves, among brothers and sisters. Lord, let us care for one another in the spirit, the Lord, that you would love us. Lord, let us turn to you for each and every need that Amen. we have. I pray, Heavenly Father, this day, Amen. Lord, that you would uh, just touch us. Give us a burden, dear God, for the lost. Holy oh, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would just touch each and every ministry of this church. Lord, you would touch each and every worker. Lord, give us a burden, dear God, to go out and seek the lost, to come in, dear God, to hear the, the precious word of Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, we're, we're unworthy. We're un unworthy of the love that you have given us. Lord, we just thank you. This day, when love became grace, that, that day on the cross, dear God, where you loved us enough, Lord, to give your life for each and every one of us, Lord, a, an undeserving people, oh, God, we just want to lift you up, lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, to, to the heights, Lord, that's never been lifted up before. That's right. Lord, let us, let us rejoice 
in our salvation. Let us not be ashamed, That's right. Lord, to tell the world, Lord God, that, that Jesus saves. That's right. Oh, Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. We lift up your name. Lord, we ask this coming weekend, this coming week, Lord, that you would just work a special miracle, your God, in the hearts of Westside Baptist Church. Lord, that when uh, uh, each and every day, Lord, that those who come to preach, Lord, you would just anoint them. Lord, give them the words, Lord, that we are in need of. Oh, Lord, preach to them. Preach to us through them, Lord, through song and the preaching of your word. Lord, let us be attentive. Lord, let us our hearts be as sponges, dear God, that we would soak up your word. Yes, Lord. And, dear God, that, that we would take your word. And, dear God, we would be better Christians. We would be better missionaries, dear God, to go out and spread the word of Jesus Christ. Lord, let us, let us not be ashamed Amen. to go out in the world, dear God, and That's tell right. the world that Jesus saves. Thank you, Lord, for loving us and caring for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I just want to say, Lord, you saved a 12 year old boy on his way to hell. Amen. That'll work. But Lord, I also want to thank you for saving me for who I could have been. Praise God for you, Lord. Lord, it's no telling where. Lord, you saw me to die on that cross. And Lord, all my hope and all my life is in you. And Lord, I just pray tonight, Lord, that you touch our church. Mm. Lord, I thank you, Lord. Lord, that what you started so many years ago That's right. has not changed. Amen. And it still stands on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. I thank you for Brother Melvin. Yes. Lord, for so many years, Lord God, he led and directed us, Lord. And Lord, how much we grew under his direction and his ministry Amen. and his preaching and his teaching. Praise the Lord. Lord, I thank you for that. And Lord, I just thank you now for Brother Alton who's come in, Lord God, to take hold of the banner, Lord. To preach your word, Lord God. Lord, help us to hold him up high so that he might hold you up high and preach your word, Lord God, to a lost and dying world, but Lord, to us as a people, Lord God, that, Lord, we have our faults. And, Lord, we need your preached word. We need your direction. And, Lord, just help us, Lord. Lord, I just pray that you be with our church next week. Lord, be with these men that mm -hmm. are coming. I pray that you begin just to touch them. Yes. Just let the Holy Spirit overwhelm them in such a way. Yes. That when they come Amen. To next week, that they'll preach like they've never preached before. Amen. Yes. And Lord, that we'd be willing to receive it, Lord That's God. That's right. Not ignore it, but use it that we might walk and be the Christian you have us to be in the church that we should be in this community mm, that's good stuff thank you Lord for just knowing that souls are still saved in this church Lord God Amen. and I pray that you'd always help us to see Lord there there's a field out there that's ripe unto harvest that's right. if we'll just go out and work amen Lord, just have your way. Lord, we just thank you. And we love you, Lord. I just can't tell you how much I love you, Lord. I just thank you, Lord. It's your name we pray. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our Father, we do come to you thanking you and praising you for what you've done in the past. There are a lot of folks in here that have been saved as children. We thank you for each one. 
And God, we're praying about something that's going to happen five days from now. Lord, we're asking for a future that begins not just five days from now, but, Lord, a future that begins right now. We're asking for your Holy Spirit to empower the preachers for sure. But, God, we pray for your Holy Spirit to come into our, into our life in a very real way and empower us to be what we ought to be. And, Lord, we, we look to the future, but we want to look back just a few hours our pastor shared his heart, shared his burden, confessed his sin to us. And Lord, we've heard some confession tonight. And Lord, the truth of the matter is, not one of us is not guilty. Lord, we've all had attitudes and said things and done things we ought not. Father, I pray that between now and the time we really get serious about praying for this meeting to, that comes up, God, I pray that each one of us would dig way deep into our hearts Amen. and into our lives. And we'd see folk that need some cleaning and some renewing. And Father, I, I believe it's already begun. I know for me, Lord, I've spent a little time this afternoon looking at my life and realizing that uh, what our pastor did yesterday is small potatoes compared to some of the things that I've thought, some of the things that I've said, some of the hurts that I've caused. And God, I pray that each one of us would come in here by Friday evening ready and renewed, cleansed, empowered, filled with your spirit, God, that we might be ready to do our part and we'll all have a part in the meeting. They'll be preaching and singing, but, Lord, every person here, God, we ought to be praying the whole time. We ought to be ready ourselves, God, to receive what you have for us. None of us will come in here without some kind of a need in our lives. And, God, I pray that those needs be met in each one of us. Lord, convict us. We need conviction. And then, God, direct our steps such that we might make it to an altar and get those things taken care of. Whatever it is, Lord, you convict and help us to have the, the wherewithal to move and to do something about it. Lord, we'd love for a community to be touched by our meeting. But Lord, if nobody gets touched but us, and God, we believe that you're doing a work and it just starts here. That's right. Father, help us. Help us one by one and help us as a body as well to be and to do all that you'd have us to be. And we're going to thank you now simply because we're asking it by faith That's right. in the powerful, precious name of Jesus, Amen. our Savior and your Son. Thank you. Amen. Pastor, stand behind the holy desk and pray, pray, pray. Heavenly Father, in the holy name of Jesus Christ, we petition. Thank you, Jesus. Thanking you, Lord, for what you have had done these years. Reminiscing back almost 39 years. Seeing countless souls walk these aisles. Go through the baptismal pool. Seeing the wonderful work you've done in, in the the hearts and lives of this community through this church. Lord, with no effort of mine, but Lord, you've done it all. No effort of my people, but you've done it all, God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. I thank you that you've sent out in our way. <laughs> thank you that he's fired up and staying and in, walking in the same tracks that we've walked these years. Now, Heavenly Father, we're heading into a meeting. It's an important meeting. Yes. It might be the means of somebody making that very, very important decision which way they're going to go. That's right. 
Lord, if there's sinners that come through these doors, Lord, I pray that we will have prayed so, that we have looked for your help, your strength, so that the Holy Spirit will be so real. That's right. When they walk through these doors, they'll come under the Holy Ghost conviction. That's right. Lord, when those men of God stand to sing the praises, Lord, help us to shout the glory. But when they just come behind this sacred desk to open the blessed book and read from the Word of God and deliver that message straight from heaven, that's right. We pray that they'll be under such anointing. The messages will be so powerful that it will open the hearts and the minds of those that don't know God. So, Lord, they'll have to make their way to the altar. And Amen. Cry, help, Lord. Help, Lord. Help, Amen. Lord. Oh, Lord, we just thank you for what you've done. Thank you for the membership now that's so faithful. Lord, we're blessed. I know we're not the largest church, but, Lord, I'm telling you what, we've got the largest God. Amen. Amen. And we thank you for that. That's right. We pray this in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Westside Baptist Church, can you say it's been a good day? Amen. Let's not forget next Sunday night after church, we're going to all go back together and eat chili, soup, and sandwiches, and anything else you want to bring. Church-wide fellowship, get to enjoy the fellowship with this quartet and Brother Mike, these other men. I don't know these other men. Maybe I do and don't realize it yet. But uh, let's just let this next week be a blessed week for West Side. Let's participate and let God do something within us. You're dismissed.